Welcome back to another episode of Lionheart Radio. I'm your host, Rick Alexander, founder of Louis Vive Supplement Company. I'm here with my co-host, Memo Ochoa. Hey guys, how you doing? And Claudia. Hi guys, Claudia Challoner here, doctor of physical therapy with Muma RX and nationally ranked powerlifter. So we have an exciting guest today. We have Chappie Hunter, who is a detective for the San Diego Police Department, owner of Alpine Ranch CrossFit, volunteer with Challenge Athlete Foundation, badass adaptive athlete, <laughs> and pretty much the nicest person you would ever meet. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Nailed the intro. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, so you have a very interesting past. So can you tell us a little bit about maybe talking about your career path first, and then we'll get into the other nitty gritty details. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How far are we going to go back? So, all the way, um, all the way back to TJ. Yeah, oh my goodness. To TJ. <laughs> I want to hear about you. Party. Yeah. <laughs> now the, uh, let's see. So, um, I, uh, after high school, I actually said, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to break and go away to college and I took off and I went to Arizona, um, Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. Oh. And I got up there for about eight months and finally realized that, oh my God, I don't know what the heck I'm doing up here and I can't survive without my parents because of being a little <laughs> sheltered kid, oh my, it was nuts. Where so, were you from originally? From San Diego, I was born okay. and raised here. And, uh, and I was smart and I uh, said, hey, I, I need to come back home and square my stuff away before I throw my whole life away. Yeah. So I came home and I uh, went back to state and I immediately jumped into uh, um, into EMT or emergency medical technician school. Um, and after I got trained there, I got picked up immediately by an uh, ambulance company called Sterling Ambulance, which was a new, new ambulance company that just started. Um, and for, I worked there for three years. Um, on my last of those three years, um, I had a partner, uh, uh, who was also volunteering and working down in uh, Tijuana as an EMT. Uh, and that was for Rescate de Alcones. Rescate de Alcones was the only advanced care life support ambulance in Tijuana at the time. Oh. Uh, we were connected to one of the fire stations there. Uh, and I went down there once a week to volunteer. And wow, that was some, <laughs> that was, that was some craziness right there. But it threw my learning experience to the roof. Yeah. If you're going to unshelter yeah. yourself. Yeah. I mean, I want, I want <laughs> ambulance in Mexico. That's the way to go. So my, my dad, my dad was a battalion chief on the San Diego Fire Department. And I swear, I mean, that's, that's where I was going. I said I was heading in that direction. And uh, so then I put in for paramedic school. And uh, at the same time, for whatever reason, I got this itch to go and take the police test for San Diego Police Department at 21 years old, actually 20 years old. And uh, the day I was supposed to start paramedic school, I actually got a phone call that morning from San Diego PD saying, hey, do you want a job? And I went, oh, I went, school, money, school, money, school, yeah. money, <laughs> money. <laughs> every time, money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I packed up and that day I was actually at the police academy oh, wow. at wow. 21 years old. And I uh, did some really fast growing up at that time. What so was money the, was the only uh, factor in your decision? Uh, yeah, I, I would time. probably say at the time. Um, and I was, I was still a little young, still a little immature, um, still trying to figure out life in a whole. And, and I thought that that was going to be a, a good direction to go. Um, thinking initially that maybe I'll just be a police officer for a couple of years and then I'll transition over right. to be a firefighter. But... Phew, I mean, the minute I graduated the academy and went out in the field, that was it for me. I was very cool. Hooked. I was happy as a lark. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I was hooked. And then uh, 22 years later, I'm sitting here at the table with you guys. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Very cool. And yeah. a few things have happened in between that 22 yeah. years, as I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had an awesome career with the police department. I mean, I worked, uh, I worked 13 years in patrol. I um, worked some of the highest crime areas in San Diego. I did eight years with SWAT, two years as a SWAT sniper. Um, I was a field training officer for the, a lot of the trainees that came through and uh, did a lot of work with them. Um, in 2007, I got promoted to detective and uh, went to the vice unit and started working in vice. Um, that's when I kind of fell into the human trafficking realm and did a lot of work in that field. And, and then uh, currently now I'm working over in the investigations bureau outside of vice. How important do you think fitness has been to your you know, success in the police department, I guess? Oh, it's been huge. Um, I was actually got the uh, top physical fitness award in the academy when I was in the police academy. That was, that was kind of the start of it. 
And uh, the one thing, unfortunately, about the police department is there's no physical fitness standards once you graduate the academy. You're on your own. If you want to decide to be a donor eater and, and uh, not, not burn it off the next day, you can. And uh, I didn't go that route. And, you know, I, I trained every day in the gym before I'd go to work. And uh, or if it was a late night shift, then when I got off work, I'd train before I came home. Um, and then uh, one day we discovered CrossFit and that really changed everything. <laughs> Didn't it for everyone? Yeah, yeah. yeah it pretty much changed everything. <laughs> This is awful, but I want to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, to the, I, I, rem, I, I can remember the first to this day. Actually, my current lieutenant who's in charge, who is my boss right now, um, he and I were the ones that did my very first CrossFit workout together. And we, he came into the police department gym and he says, hey, I got this workout we're going to do. We're going to do three dips and three pull-ups as many times as you can back and forth. And I went, yeah. Come yeah. on, we're gonna be here. We're gonna be here forever. We yeah. gotta get to work here in a little bit. Like, well, let's just see what happens. Oh my god, <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> and uh, that was just that was the first one that started. And I said, what is this stuff? And and we jumped right in. Yeah, I think so that's what in. happens. That's same time I looked at Fran for the first time. Right, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's a superset. We'll be done in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Twelve minutes later. I'm, yeah. Yeah. On my back, can't I figure out. At the academy, my buddy's like, "You want to do CrossFit?" I'm like, uh, "What? What's CrossFit?" And he's like, "Well, let's just do the workout." And it was as many deadlifts at two twenty-five. You know, <laughs> for I forgot what the uh, time was, but I did. I'm like, "This was awful, awful, yeah, awful. <laughs> yeah. awful. What? Awful. Why are we? I'm like, one. this yeah. is so dumb. Why are you doing this?" And then you know, here I am, eight years later, still doing it. You know, I'm yeah. like, "All right, this is a, it, it's pretty cool. I, I love yeah, it." So. Yeah, totally. Um, so for your athletic background, what, what did you do before, before CrossFit or before the police academy? Um, so in, you know, high you know, growing up, you know, I, I mostly played soccer for organized sport wise, but I, I played every sport possible intramural wise. Organized was mostly soccer and or soccer. Uh, once I hit high school, um, I dedicated to wrestling. Uh, and then I, I, I was wrestled all four years, um, one CIF, uh, you know, to my junior and senior year, went to masters, and unfortunately, I had a pretty severe injury in the semifinals um, to my ribs, and I was unable to finish, and therefore I wasn't able to go to state. But we're not going to whine about that. Uh, <laughs> went back, and then just from there, it was just a matter of just being active and doing the basic, you know, global gym workouts was really it. And I would run a ton. Mm -hmm. um, not, I mean, I think most of my distance was like six miles at the most uh for normal working out uh but just just normal bench press curls and all yeah, that crazy yeah. stuff is it yeah <laughs> we were all there it. yeah bench on mondays yeah. That's yeah. 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 monday <laughs> wednesday <laughs> yeah tuesday thursday back and by that's right <laughs> and what year did you get uh started doing crossfit what year was that uh i started in 2000 and it's like it was right around 2000 and three or four. Oh wow so you were an OG it was right in the beginning wow. yeah I mean now in regards to you know doing like him like we're just looking stuff up and saying let's try these different workouts as opposed to when I actually officially started at a gym for a CrossFit box um, that was in 2009 okay yeah 2009 okay. but we were dabbling in it from the beginning um, just kind of going back and forth and CrossFit.com, main site wad. And, yeah, not knowing yeah. what you're doing. At yeah, all. yeah. <laughs> it, it was mostly yeah, just friends coming in saying, "Hey, let's do this today," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> all right, let's do yeah. it." They used let's to have a it. library of videos. If you like saw the movement, didn't know what the movement was, watch the video, do it for time. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, in their gym, like there were no video quality. No videos. <laughs> yeah, no videos. That's it was just let's awesome. just do this and see yeah. what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So, so today is is kind of a. a memorable day for you um, that somewhat changed your athletic career and your career in general. General, um, Tell us a little bit about maybe what significance today is for you. Yeah, it's a, so it's a, my three-year anniversary today of, a, of an accident that absolutely changed my life forever. Uh, something, that, something that can literally happen to anybody at any time in that split second, and it did for me. Um, and, but uh, I try to make the best of it that I could. So on, on Father's Day, uh, 2013, 
Um, I was coming back actually from a non-sanctioned CrossFit event um, and down at the stadium and I was riding my personal motorcycle home and I was about maybe a half mile from my house um, coming up uh, the boulevard and there was a 17 year old girl on her second day driving uh, coming the opposite direction from me and for whatever reason uh, she decided to make a left-hand turn into a driveway right in front of me, obviously not even realizing that I was there. Um, I had little to no time to react at all. It was an instant accident. I hit the front right quarter panel of the car, and uh, the hood of her car actually instantly severed my left leg below the knee. So my leg actually drops, I hit the windshield, go over the top and land on the other side. And there were just angels that were sent from heaven that actually were in traffic right there that day. Um, one car behind me was an off-duty paramedic oh, wow. and two Navy corpsmen uh, were living in the apartment complex right exactly across the street from where I got hit. Uh, all three of them came out. Um, they removed the belt from their pants and I tourniqueted my leg and saved my life. Um, life flight to the hospital. Uh, I think uh, I was actually being wheeled in from the helicopter to the hospital. My dad had beat me to the hospital and I was cruising in on laying on my back and I saw my dad and I said, hey dad, everything's good. And I put my hand up and we did a high five going through the <laughs> hallway of the thing because all oh, those drugs were good. Oh, <laughs> drugs were good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what happened. Um, they did the emergency surgery, sewed me up, and uh, put me in to bed. And basically, a day and a half later is when I really woke up yeah. and I mm -hmm. came to. So, so now, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, there was no question at that point, the leg was gone at that point. Oh, yeah. Instantly I mean, just... if I was awake and I could have crawled over to get it, by all means. Right, but, right. Yeah. But... I'm actually pissed they didn't try and save it for me, but whatever. It's okay. Yeah, but the, uh, I, uh, it, was, it was instantly, it was, there was no chance for that. It was coming back at all. Okay. Um, I had a couple broken ribs. Uh, my left arm was shredded up pretty bad. I think my, I think the impact of the windshield was taken, the brunt of the pressure was taken by my, my forearm. Um, there was a ton of glass that they had to remove and sew that up. No other additional broken bones besides the ribs and then the concussion. Um, helmet saved my life. Helmets yeah. are good. Saved yes. my life. I mean, it, I am thankful beyond all thankfulness that it knocked me out cold because I don't remember any of it. Wow. And I'm very thankful for that, um, uh, actually, because there's a lot of people that don't and they they have dreams and nightmares about stuff that happened to them. And yeah. Sure. So I'm lucky for that. Man. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So going back to fitness, you were already into CrossFit and all that stuff. So how was it going back into into your fitness lifestyle? How did, how did that change? Oh, yeah, I was I was deep then. So I was uh, I had already been doing it for a few years, um, and actually three months before my accident, I had just gotten certified for my uh, level one hmm. um, coaching uh, coach trainer cert. So I had that. And then I was actually starting to coach um, here at my house with a small focus group of about um, eight individuals here to help me learn while I was doing it. I was building my garage out into a small box. Uh, and then I had my accident and it was eight days after my accident that I actually wheeled myself out in the garage <laughs> in my wheelchair with my nub sticking out in front of me there. <laughs> and they were, uh, and I had, I had them get back here, get back in the garage and start training. And I just started coaching them, you know, from my chair there. That's awesome. Um, eight days. Eight days. Hell eight yeah. days. Yeah. Eight yeah. days. And, and you, know, you, want, you want to be an athlete with the worst possible coach ever to try and complain because when they can't do something, I'm like, hey, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear your bitching right now. I lost my leg. Pick that up. So we, uh, we, uh, we, we did that. And uh, that worked. That actually worked out. I still use it to this day. It works great. Um, and uh, then 21 days post-accident was the day that I did my full first um, CrossFit workout on one leg. Um, and I actually videotaped that whole thing and put it on YouTube. And if you actually went to YouTube and typed in uh, Chappie Hunter, the Alpine Garage, it'll pop right up and you can see some 
pretty dumb stuff. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. Some pretty, sure. yeah. some pretty dumb stuff. That, but you know what? It, it, it was motivational for me and it made me feel good. And it, that turned out to be, you know, a start for me to get back to, yeah. get back to being in shape again. Yeah. yeah. We'll, so, we'll link to that in the show notes. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to check it out after this. Check it out. Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. So yeah. Do, you feel like, do you feel like being a coach kind of helped you recover? Um, you know, did that give you some it, back it, in? I think just you know, CrossFit and Hall. I I I've, I have said from the beginning that you know the men, the mentality and the physical fitness aspect of CrossFit really, I think, helped save me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really, I think, I was strong enough to take the brunt of that punishment. That um, my body was able to recover quicker, and mentally, I mean, I'm going to throw. 90% to, you know, my wife and my son for being my true motivation to get back to being healthy again. Mm-hmm. But that other 10% was just the mental aspect of, you know what, I can definitely do this um, from what I'd learned through CrossFit. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, but as a coach, uh, coaching-wise... Do you need to hear that here? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> it's right. like a beetle or something flying around over there. It'll Three, be- two, one. <laughs> so as a coach... Um, as a coach, uh, it, it definitely, it was frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's frustrating not to be able to step into the gym and actually physically show, Hey, this is what I'm talking about. Mm. Um, but it really keyed my verbal cues to learn, to be able to, to, to help people imagine what it was I was trying to explain to them. And then I would have, you know, Arlene or somebody else that had a little bit more experience come out and help show the movements. But the majority of the time, it was just a lot of verbal cues. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's like uh, teaching someone that doesn't yeah. speak the same language as you. Exactly. Okay? You've got to figure Difficult. out, a, you've yeah. got to figure out exactly. another way to do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, it worked out. And I think it, I think it 100%, without a doubt, it uh, motivated the athletes in here to work harder. And, uh, and they're still here to this day. And this is the original garage. This, where we're sitting at right now, is the original garage. Um, although it was half the size um, back then with about a quarter of the equipment. And as of a year ago um, is when I fully expanded to the size that it is now and then actually affiliated and opened it up to um, bringing in membership. Okay. Nice. Yeah. For everybody listening, we're directly in the garage, yep. Alpine Garage Gym right now. Or Alpine Ranch CrossFit. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Beautiful location. How many members do you have? I am capped at 45. Okay. Uh, so I, 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 I'm I, doing as best as I can to stay within county code because I am a home-based business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I mean, I've got phenomenal neighbors and I'm trying to be respect, being 100% respectful to them. In addition to that, just uh, it's just uh, my wife and I that are coaching and I am not going to sacrifice safety over anything. So if we have anything more than 10 athletes in the gym at a time when there's not enough space mm. and two, I'm not going to have more than I'm not going to, my, my athlete to coach ratio is going to be 10 to one at the most. Mm. Uh, so I try and do that. So, um, it, but it works out and, uh, we have the class time spread out and we cap the number in each class and, and, uh, except for on Saturdays, um, Saturdays are, Everybody can come if they want, and because we always do a team workout on Saturdays, it's either one, three, or the entire group mm-hmm. working together to very cool go to a goal. Awesome, so, gotcha. Yes. Yeah, this has got to be the best view I've ever seen from yeah. the CrossFit gym. <laughs> oh, you got to see yeah. the backyard. Oh yeah, see the best thing. So we have this awesome pool in the backyard. Yeah. So it's going to be 90s for the next two weeks. So I will incorporate pool wads oh, man, into um, my gym workouts, and they actually hate those more than anything else because I'll just make them tread water until they, yeah. <laughs> so it's about time to save them. But it works out. It's actually a lot of fun, cools them off at the same time. It's, it's beautiful back there too. So they can hang out and do that. Yeah. Coupling the water with fitness gets crazy quick. Oh it's yeah. It's hard yeah. quick. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have done the Frogman challenge or if you've seen it. I have not done it. So they're sponsored by Progenics. I think it's a CrossFit competition that incorporates a pool. So muscle ups are out of the water, so they always have to be strict. Oh my God. Toast, uh, they'll do like toast to ring, but out of the water, so you have that resistance of the water oh, yeah, every time you bring your feet up. Events. It's crazy. Yeah, it gets it's brutal. Insane. Yeah. Brutal. 
yeah, yeah insane pretty crazy yeah they get mad when i hand them while they're treading water a uh, water jug and then say okay you gotta keep this out of the water oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i say okay you can pass it off if you want yeah <laughs> But it works good. Works good. That's awesome. So now, do you have ad other adaptive athletes that are are drawn to the gym, or how, do you work with any adaptive athletes? Yes. Yeah, so um, being being adaptive, um, I had to relearn everything, and at the time, except for uh, CrossFit Rubicon and CrossFit Walter Reed, which is all in the East Coast, uh, there wasn't really that much going on for adaptive. CrossFit fitness and learning. I mean, I, I would jump on YouTube. I'd try anything that I could to try and figure stuff out. And there just wasn't much. So I basically started teaching myself uh, how to redo everything again, especially the Olympic lift stuff. That was that was a, a whole game changer. All my PRs dropped down a lot. And I had to fight and fight and fight to start building those back up. To Even this day, I'm still fighting to get them back up there. Uh, but what happened was, is as I started to do more and more with it, and I started to realize that I could actually do this, I actually reached out to um, Chef Wallace out there in CrossFit Rubicon, and I, and I begged. I said, hey, can I fly myself out there and come spend a week or two weeks with you guys out there on Walter Reed and Rubicon? And he's like, he's like, why aren't you here already? <laughs> and I'm like, awesome. So I, I flew out there and uh, I spent a week and a half out there with, uh, with them doing one training with them and two also them allowing me to coach other adaptives that were there as well. Oh my gosh, that was just an absolute wealth of knowledge that I gained out there and brought it back here to San Diego and, and uh, jumped in on the Crossroads Adaptive Ethics athletic alliance that they run um from crossfit rubicon out there and now I, it's i bring in you know pretty much any adaptive athlete that wants to come here and they come for one dollar a month that's all i'll charge them because i tried to say free and they said no we're paying to come here i said all right fine you pay me a dollar yeah. yeah. so that's how that came up saying so pay awesome. me a dollar and uh that's it so um i have I have uh, four adaptives right now. Uh, there's um, one with uh, missing missing limb like me, uh, and then there's a wheelchair athlete. There are, uh, and then there's um, actually no, there's two with missing limb, um, one wheelchair athlete, and then one with a TBI or traumatic brain injury that occurred from a from a uh, accident from 30 years ago and oh, she's wow. semi paralyzed down the left side and she's Which one is, of the best she's an awesome lady she's one of the best athletes in here motivating athletes in here she works very hard and she's the first one to come around to everybody and pat you on the back and say you're doing awesome i'm so happy to be here and it, she's That's she's great. great so Shelly, I love you. You're awesome. <laughs> yes. So, and again, that's just nothing but motivational and inspirational for the other athletes that are in here. And they also help out if needed, um, if I need help with them. But for the most part, we're just focusing on balance and getting better in movement and life and not necessarily looking to become games athletes. Sure. You know, we're looking to just better their lives. Yeah. Very that's cool. Great. Yeah. That's it. So can you talk a little bit about um, the Challenge Athlete Foundation and how you work with them? All right. Lifesaver life saver number two. So my second day, actually, the, yeah, the day after I had really woken up from the hospital, all of a sudden there's this person standing next to my bed in the hospital uh, with a polo shirt on that had CAF or Challenge Athletes Foundation on it. And I'm like, hi. And they're like, hey. Like, Chabby, how you doing? I'm like, I'm great. Hey, you ready to start running? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, they, they just showed up at the hospital. I had never heard or anything about the organization before in my life. And they were 100% honest about everything that they said. They said, we are going to get you back up and going again. And Challenge Athletes Foundation is a foundation that supports all um, um, adaptive athletes that are trying to better their lives, you know, and they s support financially through donations that you can apply for grants on an annual basis to um, get things that insurance isn't going to cover or for stuff that's going to help you compete. And for me, uh, my insurance 
covered my everyday leg, my walking everyday leg, they weren't going to cover anything beyond that. So um, CAF actually paid for my entire running leg. And if anybody wants to take a guess on how much a low limb, lower limb prosthetic costs. Carbon fiber? Is that the, Full is that best carbon, carbon fiber. fiber. Let's just say the leg that I got on right now, my running leg, pitcher, running leg <laughs> right here <laughs> with the carbon fiber foot, carbon fiber thing below the knee. What are we talking here? Man. My knowledge of fake legs just is taking not a guess. high. <laughs> just taking a guess. Leg. Well, I'm going to go with a couple thousand. Couple I mean, thousand? Design. I'm going to go with $3,795. Yeah, you're close. $22,000 for this leg. $22,000. $22,000 for each of my legs. So insurance wise obviously is what we're talking right. the actual ability to if i were to go and build this myself if i had the ability to do so we we're probably looking at about you know eight thousand nine thousand dollars but insurance costs are through the roof Jeez. um and so um i had a lot of people after my accidents um that from other crossfit gyms from my work um family friends everything that came together and they did fundraisers for me and they raised a ton of money to help me out. And I took that money and I put it in the bank and I used that money almost every single month to pay for things that insurance doesn't. And then the bigger products uh, like the leg or I actually have my snowboard leg over there. So I, I have a, a, a snowboard leg which is um, from a BioDap Systems. It's actually made for snowboarding, for motocross riding, and something like that. It's got a That's fox awesome. shock. It has a fox shock no in the way. ankle. Oh. <laughs> so you gotta imagine, I don't have, I don't have an ankle anymore. Yeah, you can't take so, all that. I can't. So anytime hits. that I, yeah, whenever I, so if I'm gonna squat at all, my heel comes off the ground because I, I'm gonna be on my toe because I have no ankle. Right. Well, the fox shock in the ankle gives me 30 degrees of ankle flex. Right. So now all of my ollie lifts and all my deadlifts, I converted the snowboard leg over to doing my, my ollie, my de all my ollie lifts mm -hmm. with, and now my foot is completely flat on the ground. And I can push right through the right through my ankle that I don't have. I can now push through that from down from my femur through my knee and stuff. And it's it's changed everything for me lifting wise. It's changed everything. How long have you had that? Uh, I just got that leg about six months ago, and okay. I went snowboarding again for the first time and flew down the hill. <laughs> hell yeah. Had a blast, uh, and then I converted it and started working out here in the gym with it and loving it. Absolutely loving it. So no one really told you about that, like to convert it to your lifting. No, yeah. absolutely not. There was there was you kind of figure that out. Somewhere. Yeah, there, uh, Jason um, Sturm, who is an adaptive athlete out of CrossFit Rubicon, um, he actually had just got his BioDap foot, and he was okay. using it for back squat. And I said, "Look at that!" I said, "Your your foot's flat, dude." I said, "I'm <laughs> buying that when I get home." <laughs> And so I bought it and then I came here and I just started working on it. Just kept working on it, working on it, working on it. And boom, it was, it was almost instant that I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. That so is it works huge. great. Works great. That's it works amazing. great. It allows me to completely um, break 90 degrees in, uh, in, in my, uh, in my squat and everything. So that's great. Fantastic. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. You never think about the fact that insurance is doesn't care if you're a CrossFit athlete, right? Or a police officer. No. Or they just want to do, I, I would think the bare minimum to say we helped you get back to life, right? Well, they weren't, I mean, insurance, I can, I can go for hours on that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, they, they, I basically told them, I said, the only reason why I'm not going to go back full duty to the police department is because you're not going to give me the equipment that I need to go back full duty to the police department. You're hindering my life. And, uh, and then that basically changed a little bit with their attitude, I think, towards me. And the next thing I know, I had an, I had an excellent, I have an excellent, um, everyday leg that I walk. I can also sprint in if I need to, um, mm -hmm. I can do everything that I need to do in it. Um, but, uh, but all the other stuff is just accessory that they're not going to do for me. Yeah. 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 That's an undeniable quality of the CrossFit community, I think, is their ability to kind of come together. And ah, it was phenomenal. Rally it was, around. It was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So was um, being medically retired something that they were trying to push to you? And were you, you know, thinking about it at all? 
Um, no, I'll give credit to my department. They were actually very, very, very supportive of me. I don't think that I ever gave them a chance from the day that I showed up and that I, I, I refused <laughs> to take the, the wheelchair out of the hospital. Yeah. The, they actually uh, gave me a, an escort home with the motor motorcade home um, in the car. And I think from that day forward, after they saw me on the YouTube video 21 days after the accident, they're like, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> this, they're, nothing's going to not stop happening. this guy coming back. <laughs> um, so they were extremely supportive. They actually did a, a, an awesome fundraiser, um, too, that helped me out a lot. They actually had the, the chargers there, a few of the chargers, and they did a, a huge fundraiser down at Bobo Park for me. Um, and then about four months after my accident, I came back light duty, and they allowed me to work in a light duty status. Um, um, while I was there, I had a couple more surgeries that I had to go to, through that um, pulled me down for a month at a time here and there. And then every time I would just fight day after day after day to get back physically um, so I could get back to work. And one year and 29 days post-accident, I put the uniform back on and came back full duty. That's awesome. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think there's some people that, right, the adversity, they meet adversity and adversity kind of pushes them down. And there's people that get around it. But then there's also people that just punch it right in the face, right? <laughs> and it looks like oh, yeah. the rough. Yeah. And, and, and literally, because, you know, I mean, standard-wise, so the, the police department said, I, I went to him. I went to him, you know, about two months before I was going to think that I was going to be ready to come back. And I said, okay, what do you need me to do? I'm thinking everything. And they're like, uh, we need a doctor's note and go qualifying your gun. I went, you, I just lost my leg. You don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't want me to go jump a fence or something? I'll show you I can you, do that. You don't want me to do something? No. And whatever policy and procedure-wise that came down over the years that created that thing that there's no additional physical fitness test to come back to duty, I was like, well, forget that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to develop my own. Um, and that's what I did. So I went back and I did all the physical fitness obstacle course and blew through that. And then I also went over to an officer that runs, uh, his own, um, MMA gym out of his garage. And I fought, I ground fought, I ground fought with uh, my leg on and with my leg off. And I would be in the gym telling them, I want you to try and pull my leg off while I'm fighting to see every single aspect that it would take because mm. the one thing that I did not want was any question from any of my peers at work that if I showed up on scene and they needed they needed me to save their life that I wasn't going to be able to and I think I squashed all those pretty good yeah so I actually fight better without my leg on so <laughs> <laughs> don't try and take it on <laughs> yeah that's great. That's it. And does Nike make that, or does Nike make the the shoe? Because I see, keep seeing the swish mark on the. Okay, so um, the, the actual leg itself, the uh, the so the actual blade part for the run leg is made by Oser. Oser is a, a prosthetic company that makes a lot of different feet and leg parts and knee parts and so on and so forth. The foot sole. This is just a rubber foot sole. And Nike has the patent on making the foot soles for the specific leg. Mm. Um, and then the actual um, socket, which is where my leg fits into, um, is designed by the processes, whatever process that you go to. And, uh, and then I have the big design on the back for my process, Peter Harsh Prosthetics, who I'm going to say is my lifesaver number three. <laughs> um, and uh, he um, developed my legs to give me the ability to do what I can do. Um, and I, I am very thankful to him for that. Do cool. they um, like scan your your uh, leg, or do they just do like a cast and then and then do um, do the mold and then do the uh, carbon fiber wrap around the, the yeah mold? yeah okay. so it's all it's all it's all molded so it's just like if you're gonna go and you broke your arm and you have mm -hmm. to get casted it's basically the same exact way that they do that process um, a little bit more lengthy because they need to make sure that it's perfectly fitted to all the different parts because my leg if you were to if you take my sleeve off my leg and you look at it it is not a normal looking nub it is you know it's got crevices and, and corners and i had um you know skin grafts and stuff that you have to protect plus my injury was traumatic so if you were to peel the skin back and look inside looking straight up from my uh my uh what used to be my tib fib it's just a crunched jagged end of a bone 
So it's not like they went in there and shaved it all down and make it nice and pretty. It's, you know, it's an emergency surgery and they need to seal me up to protect me from infection. So I cannot take any downward pressure, none at all. So when I'm in my prosthetic, all the pressure is placed on my, my patella tendon is about probably a good 60% of the pressures on my patella tendon. And then the other 40% or maybe like 30% is directly back in a, I call it my knee pit. Mm. So back here, and then the rest of it is just a a squeeze of the circumference all the way around um, my what used to be my calf, and uh, and then so whenever I push down, that's where the pressure's going, and I am only touching the bottom of my prosthetic, and I never have downward pressure. Mm. If I were to literally fall without my prosthetic on and went straight down to my nub, it would probably explode. So it's it's just something that I live with, not something that I do. Mm. So. When you when you run, do you start developing other like hip problems just from range, uh, not range of motion, but your gait being different and that kind of a thing? Me no. Yeah. Um, if you do not, if you're not taught how to properly run, then yes, hmm. absolutely. It's just like it's just like anything with mobility stuff. I mean, yeah. if you don't, if you're not taught how to do it properly, then no. And so my prosthesis, who's also a triathlete, he's done Ironman several times, and he's a phenomenal runner, and he held he holds clinics. And CAF holds clinics to say, hey, let us come show you how to walk, run, do all these things. And uh, he's the one that got me going for that. And so from day one, uh, I've been balanced and I fight to be balanced um, with everything on my legs, even all my movements in CrossFit. I want to be 100% balanced. Hmm. And that's the hardest thing as a coach, bringing the adaptive athletes in here who are not and having to train them to go back to using their prosthetic side and balancing them out so that's yeah. almost an art form in itself i yeah. I, I, I got to imagine because i've got both of my legs and i'm not balanced yeah oh yeah so, i was gonna yeah. say like you see balanced people walk around the gym and they're yeah. not <laughs> right <legs>. right yeah. <laughs> well the doctor here may have a different story on my balance <laughs> yeah. but for me i am even so that's yeah, we won't talk about your shoulders we won't so. talk about my shoulders so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking good in my squat that's all you got it yeah <laughs> so going back to uh what you learned at uh walt the uh, cross at walter reed and uh rubicon um, yes are you like putting together your own program that it's gonna you know since you you couldn't find any information prior uh, are you like building something or adding to any their program uh, I am now affiliated, so I'm affiliated through CrossFit for my uh-huh. gym, and I'm also affiliated through Crossroads Adaptive Athletic Alliance. Okay. And they um, have a core group of athletes that um, that they've developed now uh, instructional videos for below knee amputees, above knee amputees, bilateral amputees, okay. arm amputees, uh, wheelchair athletes, uh, everything that you can possibly think of, and you can go to their website and click on a link that will say, okay, I have a baloney amputee. I'm trying to teach them how to do a squat. Boom, there it is. Oh, wow. And so, and in addition to that, they hold um, training classes, which are which uh, they held here in San Diego a while back. And then I went out and helped them with that. Uh, and then we go and train and teach. And then on top of that, the other local gyms here, um, occasionally they'll call and they'll say, hey, I would love to bring you in and let you talk to my coaching staff for you know a half hour or an hour and teach us in case somebody were to walk through the door. And the number one most important thing with anything related to an adaptive athlete is 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 accepting them in and making sure that they're included in everything that happens in the gym. Yeah. Are they going to be scaled? Are they going to be even possibly doing different tr- workout? Yes. But they're going to be here and they're going to go right alongside everything that everybody else is doing in here. And mm-hmm. they love the inclusion. Mm-hmm. That's it. So for me developing that, I'm trying to do my best out here to make that a reality um, for you know San Diego, period. So many adaptive athletes or people that struggle with maybe internal situations might not be as outgoing with you as you as you as you have been through your recovery so what kind of advice would you give for someone that might be struggling with their injury or now that they're an adaptive athlete or maybe they're struggling with something else insecurities yeah exactly 
Yeah, um, there's the the one thing that I do when I like when I volunteer for CF and I go and give um, talks, or if I'll I'll even show up bedside at hospital for people that just had an injury a day or two before, like mine. And then I go and give my talks, and and the one thing that we always that I always start out with and end with is the fact of just never giving up on life, mm-hmm. and finding whatever it is that is important in your life to drive you to get better. My drive was my wife and my kid, um, and the fact that I know I had to be a husband, a father and a man to be able to support my family. And that was my drive. And whatever that is for somebody, find it, hold on to it, and work your ass off every day to achieve it. Do I have, do I have days or weeks when I'm standing in a shower on one leg, balancing and pushing against the wall because I'm almost gonna fall down sometimes? And I'm washing myself, Dan, like that, and I, and I, and I start to feel depressed, and I start to feel bad for myself, and then I hop out of the shower, and then there's my family sitting there, and the next thing I know, five minutes later, I'm, I'm fine. You know, it's like the other thing too is, is on top of that, which I came to realize is there's what I have is a paper cut. You know, I mean, uh, there's people out there that have trauma whether that's invisible trauma yeah. or whether that's true physical trauma especially the war veterans coming back from Afghanistan is I mean the devastation that they have in their life as a whole I mean I I can't even imagine that so I always tell myself that hey you know what you are a lucky man and you um, just have a paper cut and get your butt back out there because you have nothing to complain about um, so mostly it's just a matter of picking what you want yeah. and fighting for it. Yeah. So, yeah. It seems like finding, well, first of all, having perspective and then finding your why yeah. really. Yeah. 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 If you go to my Facebook today, you'll see a picture of my boy doing my physical therapy for it. me. I was like, yes, physical therapy yeah. training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. He was doing my physical he therapy for me. Extension right there. <laughs> At five years old, yeah. and that was that was it right there, you know. And it just it brings tears in my eyes as I was putting that in there and going, you know what? He's uh he's he's one of my lifesavers right there. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. Um, so fitness not only has been um, a driving force, like just within your home and within CrossFit, but out in the community for you. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the PE program that you kind of have going on? Oh yeah, so um, so I live here in in Alpine, and it's a suburb of, of San Diego, and and uh, there's three elementary schools in Alpine, and my boy goes to uh, Boulder Oaks Elementary School, and last year I was talking actually I was I was talking to him about what he does at school during recess and what he does for PE, and he's like. What's PE? <laughs> I would have said no. And he's like, really? Yeah, like, really? Wow. <laughs> Come to find out that there's no really PE anymore, period, in school systems, um, especially public school systems. God. You know, oh. a lot of yeah. the charter schools will have it, but there's, there's really not. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and so I went over there one day and he had an amazing teacher. And he was in, he was in second grade. And I said, hey, I'm like, why, why don't we just, uh, you know, maybe once a month I'll come here and we'll have your kids in the class and we'll just do something fun, have some fun athletic things going on and we'll do like a little obstacle course thing or something like that. And that, that one day, you know, went from those kids coming outside and having an absolute blast (laughs) and they actually went back into class. The teacher um, came back in and said they went back into the class actually more attentive and more ready to learn and they ha- and they wanted more of it imagine that yeah. imagine that <laughs> oh, yeah. imagine that connection exercise the brain <laughs> so then we started talking more and i said well i could actually you know program something like this and i could come once a month and just run these kids through for a half an hour and do something fun from it turned into that that's what i was doing every week 
So halfway through the school year, um, that's what I started to do. So every week I would go and it was just his classroom. And then the next thing you know, all the other kids are standing at the fence or they're standing at their classroom window going, why don't we get to do that? You know, why don't we get to do that? And then the principal jumped on board and she was, she was, uh, she was like, this is great. It's a lot of fun and we have the time to make it happen. And at the very end of that school year, she said, Hey, we have an extra classroom. Would you like to use that classroom? Because on the days, like it's going to be 112 on Monday out here. It was too hot. There was no way we were going to do it out on the asphalt. And then the other days when it was too cold, what were we going to do? So I, had to, I kept having to cancel yeah. at times. She's like, I got a classroom. I'm like, great. So then I went out and I said, all right, I need equipment. So I got donations. Um, my uh, parents actually donated uh, money and I outfitted the entire classroom like a miniature CrossFit box. And nice. uh, then this year, um, the new principal took over and she was like, this is, this is, we're making this happen. And so every single week, what I did was, is I do all the programming. There's a uh, warm up, a skill that's specifically associated to the Presidential Fitness Award. Mm -hmm. So um, whatever that is, we're gonna learn. And then in addition to that, squat. So squatting and then everything else related for the, for the Presidential Fitness Award they have to do in fifth grade. And then after that, they have an actual workout or a wad. And then after that, they have a game. And all of that is done in a in a uh, in a forty five minute time frame, mm -hmm. and uh, so I developed a lot of the games, and then I also got a lot of help from the Brand X Method up in Ramona, who does a lot of kids and teens stuff, and, uh, and so now we're in the process of trying to make Boulder Oaks Elementary a Brand X Method um, school, and the kids are performing amazing. Yeah, amazing, of course. Awesome. Amazing. That's awesome. cool. Yeah, yeah that is really cool. Yeah. Because active duty police and Alpine Ranch CrossFit and CAF was not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's it's yeah. Yeah. it's it's uh it's a lot of work, but at the same time, I'm looking at my my own son's future. So, not to say that if he wasn't there, that I still wouldn't put myself out there for it. But you know what? Um, I want him to have a healthy lifestyle and to be and set an example for the other kids. And uh, I think that I think that that's happening mm -hmm. and the kids are loving it. And it's I think that at the end of this year, which ends next week, you're going to see a definite improvement in testing scores and everything. So, that'll be yeah, that'll, that'll be, be awesome. the catalyst. I yeah. bet. Yeah. So uh, we're hoping by next year that this is going to be like an official thing for the school that we can actually branch out to the other schools here in Alpine, possibly to other schools in the community. So why do you think many schools aren't aren't trying to look at something like this? Uh, funding. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's funding. Like funding. Thing, yeah. That's funding's everything in life. Period. <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> I mean, just for the police department, let alone anything else. But school. I mean. So much has been taken away from these schools, which is yeah. only affecting you know, our children's education. And, and the biggest thing that's been cut is physical education because, you know, math, English, you know, uh, the stuff that we have to do in the classroom is priority for testing. But nobody realizes that it's the actual act physical activity that gets the blood pumping that pushes the blood to the brain that actually makes the brain function <laughs> to be able to do that stuff. And I think Kelly Starrett's a huge proponent of that stuff when he's doing the stand-up desk um, thing right now. He's tr actually trying to introduce stand-up desks, which I have at my work for myself, yes. mm -hmm. to try and improve that. Or even if it's before you're going to take a major test, you know what? Do 10 burpees and then get up and t take your test. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I truly believe in that. So... Um, I believe I his it. website is standupkids.org, I think. You can probably find the link to it. Okay. Link it up. But yeah, he's yeah. putting out some really good information and stuff. So yeah, we talked about the, that book spark as well, yeah. which has a, it talks about the correlation between fitness and um, cognitive function and the role that BDNF plays and all that. I'm sure you can speak to a little bit better, but yeah, no. seeing the test scores will help people draw that direct line. And I yeah. think that will be what hopefully yeah what drives yeah and me being a high school graduate i'm not a doctor you know but all i know is that i just what i see 
and the abilities that those kids are having and how well they're performing what I see in school and the teachers give back to me, you know, I'm sold, you know, we're, let's keep doing it. Yeah. Keep yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Didn't cross it do a, a little study or project on that? Having like kids do a little circuit, I'm some kind sure. of circuit training mm-hmm. and then having them do some that. like math or I saw it somewhere. It might have been crossed it. I don't. I don't know. I forgot where yeah, I read I'll have it. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. But yeah, they were saying that you know, well, just like we were, you know, you guys were saying, their cognitive function just went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Again, it makes sense. Yeah. Goddamn death beetle is bad. <laughs> <laughs> buzzing all yeah. over the don't place. Don't be scared of it. Just go on over there. Push <laughs> yeah. him out. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> it's not. A, it's just a beetle. It's like, yeah. it might poop on you. That's it's about got a it. Beetle buzzing around <laughs> in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. Is there uh, anything else that we haven't asked you that you kind of wanted to talk about? Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, No, I think you guys have uh, nailed pretty much everything. I'm I'm just I'm just very, very excited that you guys actually chose me to come out here and do this. I'm I'm humbled by that. You're the nicest guy I know. I'm I'm, I'm humbled. I'm humbled humbled by that. So uh, I guess the main thing is, is that uh, Alpine Ranch CrossFit as a whole, I'm, I'm a I mean, this is, I'm committed. It's something that um, I'm really hoping to be able to expand here in the future and possibly even in the near future. Mm. And uh, if that happens, then, you know, the nothing's going to change in regards to the work with the adaptive athletes. Um, in fact, I'm hoping it's only going to grow. And I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, other than that, that's it. Cool. So, um, awesome. Where well, can people go to learn a little bit more about you and uh, and what you have going on? I know you're you're capped out for members here. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, you type in Chappie Hunter in Google period, and you're gonna get all kinds of craziness, okay. right? all kinds of crazy. You get stuff from the police department. You get stuff from the past. You get all kinds of stuff related to my accident, and you get stuff about the gym. Um, if, however, if specifically for the gym site itself, it's just AlpineRanchCrossFit.com. Um, is our website and there's also a link in that website for adaptive athletes which also links to the working wounded, working wounded games that happens every year back in uh, Virginia um, and the next one's I think is coming in November this year so very cool yeah yes well thanks so much for coming on yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to have to have you back a few a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well, no, no, I, just, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Next one will have to be by, by the pool. So. Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll be by the pool, we'll have a little drink in our hand. <laughs> exactly. Scouting out all the next spots. Yeah, deal. <laughs> Thanks for having us here in, uh, in your home, your garage. Uh, You're welcome. You want dinner? Come on inside. <laughs> <laughs> we'll barbecue. Oh, yeah. Thank all you. Right. That's yeah. all for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Chip the whip. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening to Lionheart Radio. Don't forget to rate us and download our other episodes. For your supplement needs, go to louisvive.com. And for your sports therapy needs, visit movement-rx.com. In my closet like a stove, bitch Only difference is you ain't gon' find this in no stove, bitch I'm fresher than your whole clique